University Challenge. Asking the questions, a more version. Hello and welcome to another match in the quarter-final stage of this year's University Challenge. Tonight's teams will be hoping to secure the first of the two wins they need to qualify for the semis. But at this point in proceedings, they can afford to lose once and still stay in the competition. Trinity College Cambridge have already lost one match this series against fellow quarter-finalist Manchester in round one. They let a comfortable lead slip in the closing minutes, but their score qualified them for the repechage, where they beat Southampton emphatically. Their second round match against Warwick was almost a repeat of their first, but on that occasion, they were fortunate that their opponents stumbled on the very last starter. They've been excellent so far on fine art and classical music, a bit more hit and miss on literature, and their average score per game is just under 200 and 10 points. Let's meet them again. Hi, I'm Sarah Henderson. I'm from North London and I'm studying Japanese. Hi, I'm Agnijo Banerjee. I'm from Dundee and I'm studying for a PhD in maths. And their captain? Hi, I'm Ryan Chunsok Kang. I'm originally from Seoul, South Korea, and I'm doing a PhD in organic chemistry. Hi, I'm Jeremy Akshina. I'm from Białystok, Poland, and I'm doing masters in genetics. The team from the Open University have also got here via the repechage, having been a little slow to get going in their first match against Hartford College, Oxford. In the playoffs, however, they raced to an early lead against a very capable team from Oxford Brooks and beat them decisively. Nine correct starters from Mr Davidson then helped them see off the University of East Anglia in round two, and they've been very strong on literature as well as on film and popular music, but have often looked less sure of themselves on science. And their average score per game is 225. Let's meet them for the fourth time. Hi, I'm Ellie Romans. I live in Oxfordshire and I'm studying nursing. Hi, I'm Mike Holt from Wilmslow in Cheshire and I'm studying towards the Open degree. And their captain. Hi, I'm Anne Gavigan. I live in London and I'm studying art and architectural history. Hiya, I'm James Davidson. I'm originally from Fraserburgh in Aberdeenshire and I'm studying English literature. Well, you've done this a few times and you're quite good at it, so I'm not going to remind you of the rules. Fingers on buzzers. Here's your first starter for 10. The approach to graphic design, known as the international typographic style, originated in and often bears the name of... Open Gavigan. Switzerland? Switzerland is correct, yes. <laughs> Your bonuses open are three questions on the Asian financial crisis of 1997 and 1998. <laughs> the Asian... Well, it wasn't funny for those who experienced it, I can tell you. The Asian financial crisis began when which country unpegged its currency from the US dollar, setting off a series of currency devaluations and massive flights of capital? Thailand or Japan? Oh, the Philippines, maybe? Because that used to be part of the US, didn't it? Uh, Japan. No, it was Thailand. In the first six months, the Thai baht was down by more than 50%. Which neighbouring country's currency, the ringgit, was down by about 45%? Is that Cambodia? Cambodia? No, the ringgit is Malaysia. In which Southeast Asian country did the financial crisis result in the downfall of Suharto, who had dominated politics there for more than 30 years? Indonesia. Indonesia is correct, yes. <laughs> Another start for 10 now. In 1939, the US geographer Mark Jefferson introduced what term to describe a city that is overwhelmingly larger than any other city in its country and dominates that country's... Trinity Yakshina. Metropolis. No, I'm afraid you lose five points. And dominates that country's political and economic life, for example, Paris, Bangkok and Mexico City. The same word can refer to the most senior bishops within a state, such as the Archbishops of Canterbury and York, and is also the name of an order of mammals that includes lemurs, tarsiers and macaques. Open Gavigan. Primate City? Correct, yes. <laughs> Your bonuses then open are three questions on the subjects of songs by Stevie Wonder. First, which jazz pianist and band leader born 1899 is the titular subject of a 1976 song by Wonder on the album Songs in the Key of Life? Its lyrics name check Basie, Miller, Satchmo, and Ella, but call this musician the king of all. Duke Ellington? If you want yeah, yeah. Okay. Duke Ellington? It is Duke Ellington, yes. Which US president was the target of Wonder's protest song, You Haven't Done Nothing, from his album Fulfillingness's first finale? His term in office ended two days after the song's release as a single. Well, it's a term of office. It's ended. Ended. It's ended at a random yeah. time. Yeah. Um, so maybe, uh, is he like Vietnam or yeah. so... Rick Johnson, maybe? Oh. Vietnam? Johnson. No, it's Nixon. Wonder's 1981 song, Happy Birthday, was written to support a campaign to make which public figure's birthday a national holiday in the US? Yeah. Martin Luther King. Correct. <laughs> Another question now. 
Which novelist did Walter Scott call the first poetess of romantic fiction and Thomas de Quincey the great enchantress of that generation? In Northanger Abbey, Catherine Morden... Open Davidson. Anne Radcliffe. Anne Radcliffe is correct, yes. <laughs> Your bonuses, then, are on women in Greek mythology. All three appear in Euripides' tragedy, The Trojan Women, set soon after the fall of Troy. First, which of the characters in Euripides' play is the Queen of Troy, wife of Priam and mother of Hector and Paris? Helen. No, it's Hecuba. Which daughter of Hecuba is given to Agamemnon? Referring to the future, she speaks of mother murder that my bridal brings and all the house of Atreus. Down, down, down. Clytemnestra. No, it's Cassandra. Finally, which character is the wife of the king of Sparta? No, I don't. Say Helen again. Yeah, Helen. Helen is correct. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> now start the question now. A short single word answer is enough here. A member of the Beach family, what common tree may be identified in winter by round buds in clusters and in the growing season by its round lobed leaves? The pedunculate, or English species, is distinguished from the dermast, or sessile species, by the presence of stalks on its characteristic nuts. Uh, open halt. Oak. Oak is correct. <laughs> Your bonuses then open the three questions on economic paradoxes. The paradox of thrift states that efforts to increase levels of savings have the opposite effect, which British economists popularise it in works such as the 1936 General Theory of Employment, Interest and Money. Yeah. Keynes. Keynes is right. Born in 1926, which US economist gives his name to a paradox proposing that increased wealth does not produce a corresponding growth in happiness or well-being? I've heard of it, but I can't think who it is. Friedman. No, it's Easterlin, Richard Easterlin. In a work of 1776, which Scottish economist presented the diamond water paradox? This Smith. Starts... Adam Smith is correct. <laughs> picture round now, so you can get going with this, Trinity, plenty of time. And for your picture starter, you're going to see a map of a British city adjusted to highlight the amount of green space in the city, both public spaces and private areas. For ten points, name the city. Trinity Yakshina. Is it Liverpool? It is Liverpool, yes. <laughs> Following on from that map of Liverpool, then Trinity, with the city's green spaces highlighted, for your bonuses, you'll see three similar maps of major cities in the UK. Five points for each city you can name. First? Um, it's, it's, on, it's close to the sea. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. Which side are we thinking? Are we thinking like. Is this like Canterbury, maybe? I don't know. Like it's, oh, it's, okay, we yeah, can try right. Canterbury. Does that make sense for everybody? Yeah. Canterbury? It's Edinburgh. Ah. Secondly, is there a bell with anybody? Um, so it's like really dense in the middle and... Like, is it Birmingham maybe? Yep, could be, yeah. Birmingham. Um, because Birmingham, yeah. Uh, let's go with Birmingham. Birmingham? No, it's Sheffield. And finally? Um, goes out to the river. There's a river running out to the out, right? Um... Wait, Bri this could be Bristol. Oh, yeah, yeah let's try that. Sure, yeah. Bristol? Yeah, it is Bristol, yeah. <laughs> Now, start the question now. In medieval history, what term meaning installation of a person in a rank or office describes a long running struggle or controversy between secular. Trinity Yakshina. Investiture. Correct, yes. <laughs> Your bonuses then are on the chemistry of pine trees. First, a major contributor to the aroma of Christmas trees is the compound pinene, which occurs naturally as alpha pinene and beta pinene. What name is given to the family of highly aromatic hydrocarbons that includes the pinenes? Uh, tarpinoids, I, I'd go for something like that. Yes. Uh, tarpinoids? I can accept that, yeah. The answer I was after was terpenes, but I'll accept terpenoids. Second, possibly derived from the German word for vinegar, what name is given to compounds formed by the condensation of an alcohol and an acid? An example is bornal acetate, the fragrant and Esther. found... Ester is correct, yes. Finally, what term denotes compounds such as alpha-pinene and beta-pinene, both of which have the same chemical formula, but differ in the way their atoms are arranged? What do they, do they want? Do they just want isomers or...? Yes. Yeah. yeah, I think yeah, they just want I... isomers. Isomers is correct, yes. <laughs> right, let's start the question now. I need the name of a person here. Quote, What can be said at all can be said clearly, and what we cannot talk about must be passed over in silence. Given in translation, those are the words of which philosopher? <laughs> Trinity Banerjee. Wittgenstein. It is Wittgenstein, yes. <laughs> Your bonuses are on British thinkers of the early 20th century. I need the two initials and the surname by which each is best known. Who wrote the 1940 work A Mathematician's Apology? He made yeah. noted collaborations in pure yeah, mathematics with John E. Littlewood. Yeah, G. H. Hardy. G. H. Hardy is correct, yeah. Born in 1889, which philosopher, historian and archaeologist is noted for works such as Speculum Mentis, The Principles of Art and The Idea of History? Is it Gordon V. Child? So, G. V. Child? I'll just nominate you. 
Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. yeah, nominate Yakshina. G.V. Child? No, that was R.G. Collingwood. Okay. Finally, who introduced the term naturalist fallacy in the 1903 work Principia Ethica? For more than 20 years, he was the editor of the philosophical journal Mind. Is this G.E. Moore? Yes. Oh, no, yeah, 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 OK, nominate okay. Uh, Banerjee. G.E. Moore? G.E. Moore is correct, yes. <laughs> Let's start the question now. A ceiling tondo bearing the legend Causarum Cognitio, or Knowledge of Causes, labels which major work of Renaissance art, the best known of four frescoes, illustrating different types of knowledge in the Vatican Palace's Stanza della Segnatura? Trinity Yankshina. School of Athens by Raphael. Correct, it is the School of Athens by Raphael. <laughs> Your bonuses, Trinity, are on stock characters in the Italian Commedia dell'arte. In each case, name the character from the description. Often portrayed as a saucy servant girl, the character whose Italian name means little dove. In English pantomime, she was often portrayed Palomina. as Harlequin's love interest. Palomina. Yeah, Palomina. No, it's Columbine. Oh. Usually married to, or in pursuit of, a younger woman, the avaricious old man often portrayed as a Venetian merchant. In the Seven Ages of Man speech in As You Like It, he represents the Sixth Age. It's Harlequin. No, that, no, that's one of the servants. It's not Harlequin. Uh, do we have anything? Um, like, any... It's like, it's like, it's... Well, it's like, I think this is one of the characters called the Vecchi, like the okay. old one. Okay, like Vecchi. Okay, Vecchi. No, it's Pantaloon. Finally, typically clad in black, the cowardly but boastful servant whose name yeah. comes from the Italian meaning skirmish. Could it be Harlequin? Uh, that's been said, hasn't it? Harlequin yeah, hasn't been said. Yeah. Oh. Yes, we have, yeah. Harlequin. Uh, Scaramucci. Oh. Just five points in it. Another starter question. I need two answers promptly here. Fought in the 1850s and 1950s, respectively, which two wars take their names from peninsulas in the Black Sea at... Open Romance. Crimean and Korean. Crimean and Korean is correct, yes. Your bonuses open are on cultural creations that feature in Arthur C. Clarke's novel 2001 A Space Odyssey. First, at the end of the novel, the character David Bowman finds himself looking into a room with two well-known paintings. One of these is Bridget Arl, by which post-impressionist? No, no, Post-impressionist. Yeah. Oh, no, no, just name one. Suzanne. No, it's Van Gogh. The other painting is Christina's World, a 1948 painting Andrew by... Andrew Wyeth. Andrew Wyeth is correct. Soon after viewing the paintings, Bowman finds a television and hears a performance of the violin concerto of which composer, born in Oldham in 1902. He composed two coronation marches. Oh, uh, Barber? 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 Barber. Barber's older than 1902. Yeah. yeah. Barber. Barber. No, it's William Walton. Okay. Oh. Now, to start the question. The US astronomer John A. Wheeler is often credited with coining the two-word name for what objects in 1967? Their existence was predicted from Einstein's theory of general relativity in 1916 and... Trinity Banerjee. Black holes? Black hole is correct, yes. <laughs> Your bonuses, Trinity, are on household insects. In each case, I want the common name of the insect described. First, Lepisma saccharina, also known as carpet sharks and sugar mites. About one centimetre long, they have a shiny metallic appearance and prominent yeah. antennae. Silverfish. Correct. Secondly, flat, oval and reddish-brown species of the genus Simex, in the order Heteroptera, that feed on the blood of warm-blooded animals. Uh, they are flightless and can move around in luggage and use furniture. Bed, bed bugs. Bed bug, nasty, nasty little brutes, aren't they? Finally, Blatteria, an order of large insects with leathery wings. Cockroaches. Cockroaches, correct, yes. Music round now, and for your music starter, you'll hear an extract from a piece of jazz music. For ten points, please give me the name of the lead artist. Hey, Laura, it's me. Sorry, but I had to ring your doorbell so late. But there's something bothering me. Anyone? I really am sorry. Open Gavigan. John Baptiste. No, but it just couldn't wait. Anyone? Is there no, someone I'll tell you. else instead? It was Gregory Porter. You'll get some music bonuses when we get the next starter right. Answer as soon as your name is called, naming the two countries that are members of both the European Union and the Commonwealth. Uh, open Romans. United Kingdom and Malta. No. Trinity Kang. United Kingdom and Cyprus. I'm presuming you guys have all forgotten about this thing called Brexit. <laughs> you could have had it between you. It's Cyprus and Malta. Oh. Bad luck. Oh. <laughs> yeah, OK. Yeah. <laughs> now, the start of the question. Just five points in it. In what century did Orkney and Shetland pass into Scottish control as a consequence of the marriage settlement between Margaret of Denmark and King James III? Trinity Banerjee. 13th. No. 
Uh, open Davidson. 15th. 15th is correct. <laughs> what feels like a long time ago now, you heard a track from Gregory Porter's album Liquid Spirit, which won in the category Best Jazz Vocal Album at the 2013 Grammy Awards. Your bonus is open. Are tracks by three more 21st century winners of either Best Jazz Vocal Album or Best Jazz Instrumental Album at the Grammy Awards? I want you to name the artist, please, in each case. First, this jazz guitarist who won Best Jazz Instrumental Album in 2012. The only jazz guitarist I know is Django Reinhardt, who is dead. Oh, well, dead. How long is he been dead? It may have come back. Yeah, I, I, I might just say... The revival to come. <laughs> yeah. John Baptiste. No, that was Pat Metheny. Okay. Secondly, this saxophonist who won in 2008... <laughs> Marcellus. No, that's Michael Brecker. And finally, this vocalist and bassist who won Best Jazz Vocal Album in 2012. <laughs> Corinne Bailey Ray. That's Esperanza Spaulding. Jazz not your thing, I take it. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, let's start the question now. Based on the US date format, month followed by day, what date is Tau Day? That's T-A-U. The... Trinity Kang. 28th of June. It is the 28th of June, yes. Your bonuses, Trinity, are three questions on literary theory and criticism. Which Canadian critic wrote the 1957 work Anatomy of Criticism in which he attempted to set out, in his words, a synoptic view of the scope, theory, principles and techniques of literary criticism? Any Canadian critic? Bloom is the only one I know, but he died, like, a couple of years ago, so it's not 1957. Do you want to just try that? Nominate Jack Sheena? Bloom? No, it's Northrop Fry. Problems of Dostoevsky's Poetics is a work of 1929 by which Russian philosopher? By analysing Dostoevsky's work, the author developed several concepts now used widely in literary theory, such as narrative polyphony and the carnivalesque. Mikhail Bakhtin, I think. OK, nominate Yakshina. Bakhtin. Bakhtin is correct. Which French critic wrote the 1970 work SZ, in which he applies the theoretical principles of structuralism in close analysis of a short story by Balzac? Um, any French that's me to think of? Um, no, I don't, okay. Structuralism is Levi, Levi Strauss, but it's anthropologist, not... Okay, we can just try that, so, nominate oh. Yakshina. Levi Strauss? No, it's Roland Barthes. So let's start the question now. From an Irish word meaning little ridge, what name is given to an elongated hill shaped by the movement of glacial ice? Trinity Kang. Moraine. No. Uh, Open Gavigan. Rill. No, it's Drumlin. Let's start the question. Which major North American transport hub appears in the title of a 1945 prose poem by the Canadian author Elizabeth Smart, immediately before the words, I sat down and wept? Uh, Open Davidson. Grand Central Station. It is Grand Central Station, yes. <laughs> Your bonus is then open. The three questions are on Renaissance popes. What was the surname of Alfonso, who in 1455 became Pope Calixtus III? Medici again? Yeah. Yeah. Medici? No, it's de Borgia. Alfonso's nephew, Rodrigo, became pope in 1492. What was his papal name and regnal number? Alexander VI. Uh, nominate Davidson. Alexander VI. Correct. Yeah. Which son of Pope Alexander VI did Machiavelli cite as an example of the new prince? Uh, Borgia. Leo Cesare Borgia. Oh, Cesare Borgia. Cesare Borgia is correct, yes. Yeah. Let's start a question. In biology, what word denoting a geographic feature follows CPG in the name of a genomic region with a... Trinity Yakshina. Island. You had to get that one, didn't you? <laughs> My supervisor will kill me. Your bonuses then, Trinity, are three questions on an explorer. A national park named after which explorer is located on the South Island of New Zealand, northwest of Nelson? Part of it lies on a bay where he made landfall in December 1642. Is it, it's too early for Cook, right? Yeah. yeah um, it's not my turn. Uh, My name's Drake. That's too early for Drake, right? Uh, I'm not sure about this one. Do you want to just try Drake? Yeah. Drake? No, that was Abel Tasman. Second, after his landfall on South Island, Tasman skirted the North Island, continuing to which archipelago southeast of Fiji? Captain Cook later named them the Friendly Islands. Um, archipelago. Okay. South Pacific. Do you know any? No, I don't. Where's Kiribati? Is yeah, we, long place, but Gilbert discovered it. I thought let's just go Kiribati then. Kiribati? No, it's Tonga. Tasmania was given its current name in 1856. What name did Tasman give to it after the governor of the Dutch East Indies, who had ordered the voyage? Um, 
Oh, like any like I guess Dutch. No explorers. Dutch explorers. I know like was Barons Dutch. Yes, but it's completely yeah. yeah. Um, Come on. No idea. Pass. It's Van Diemen's land. Picture round now, scores level. For your picture starter, you'll see a photograph of a cultural figure. Ten points if you can give me her name. Open Gavigan. Mary Quant. It is Mary Quant, yes. <laughs> that was the fashion designer Mary Quant, who died in 2023. For your bonuses, you'll see three more photographs of well-known fashion designers at work. Five points for each designer you can name. Firstly... Oh, is this Coco, Coco Chanel? Chanel yeah. Coco Chanel. Is Chanel. Secondly, this designer, shown here when he was working for Dior. Uh, Yves Saint Laurent. Correct. And finally, the male designer pictured here. Dior. Uh, no, it's... Oh, Audrey Hepburn, it's, um, it's Givenchy. Audrey... Givenchy. Correct, yes. <laughs> working on the dress for Audrey Hepburn there, yeah. Now, let's start the question. What two-word name is given to the change in the apparent frequency of a wave source when there is relative motion... Ah. Open halt. Doppler effect. Doppler effect is correct. <laughs> Your bonuses then are three questions on video games released in 1999. January 1999 saw the release in Japan of the first in which series of fighting games developed by HAL Laboratory for Nintendo. It features Super Smash Brothers. Correct. Armageddon is the subtitle of the third instalment of which series of turn-based strategy games this by Team yeah. 17. Worms. Correct. 1999 also saw the release of the first game in which survival horror series published by Konami? The player character is oh, Harry Silent Mason, Hill. who is searching for his... Silent Hill. Correct. Let's start the question now. Ceded to France in 1860 and associated with the artists such as Chagall and Matisse, which Mediterranean city is the capital of the Alp Maritime Department? Uh, open Romans. Nice. Nice is correct. Your bonuses open are on SI unit prefixes. In each case, name the prefix for the multiplying factors given. I need two answers in each case. First, 10 to the power 21 and 10 to the power minus 21. No, I know. It's very big. It's very small. To say something. Could you again? <laughs> no, no, no. No, very big and very small is one way of putting it. No, Zeta and Zepto. Second, 10 to the power 30 and 10 to the power minus 30. Like random Greek letters, no, it's not Greek letters, though. Oh, it's okay. like Pipto. It, it'll be like Tetra. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, nobody knows. Come on. No. Okay, Tetra Google and Tret. No, it's Queta and Quecto. Finally, 10 to the power 12 and 10 to the power minus 12. Deco. 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 Nano. Yeah. Nano and Deco? Yeah. Uh, Nano and Deco? You should have got that one. That's Terra and Pico. <laughs> That's mere A level physics. Right, uh, another starter question. What dynasty began with the rule of Ardashir and ended with that of Yazdegerd III, an adversary of the Kushana, Roman and Byzantine empires? It fell to the Arabs in the mid... Trinity Yakshina. Sassanids. Is correct, yes. Your bonus is Trinity. A few questions on British artists associated with the pre-Raphaelite movement. First, born in 1829, which artists' work include Christ in the House of His Parents, Ophelia and the Blind Girl? Mm, is it Millet? Yeah. Let, let's go. Yeah, um, yeah nominate Yakshina. Millet. Millet is correct. Second, born in 1855, whose works include The Women of Sorrento, Aurora Triumphans, and The Gilded Cage? I don't know. Uh, pass. Evelyn de Morgan. Finally, born in 1827, who painted The Hireling Shepherd, The Scapegoat, and The Light of the World? Well, Holman, Holman Hunt. Hunt. Correct, yeah. Now, let's start a question now. Sometimes attributed to Eratosthenes, the ancient Greek text, Katasterismi, is a prose retelling of the mythological origins of what phenomena? Chapters in the work include Cepheus and Cassiopeia. Trinity Banerjee. The constellations. Correct. Your bonus is then, Trinity. A three questions on the mammalian heart. Which chamber of the heart receives blood from the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava? Right, uh, top one, right e atrium. Yeah, right atrium. Correct. Second, also known as the mitral valve, which valve prevents backflow of blood from the left ventricle to the left atrium? Tricuspid, yeah. Tricuspid. Bad luck. It's a bicuspid valve. Finally, which artery receives blood from the right ventricle? Right ventricle. Uh, right ventricle, so that must be the, the main aorta. No, it's the pulmonary yeah. artery. Oh, we're sorry, sorry. Yeah, actually, yeah, we're... Now, the start of the question. Which countries, two main island groups, are usually known by the names Barlavento and Sotavento, meaning windward and leeward in English? The latter group contains the country's largest island, Santiago, on which its capital, Praia, is located. Uh, open Romans. Dominican Republic? No. Uh, Trinity and China? Cuba? No, it's Cape Verde. Now, the start of the question. I need you to spell your answer here. What six-letter word denotes an unsaturated hydrocarbon with at least one carbon-carbon triple bond? Uh, open halt. 
Smith, don't sorry. know if we need an immediate answer. Trinity Banerjee. A L K Y N E. A L K Y N E is correct. I'm afraid you lose five points. Okay. So your bonuses then, Trinity, are three questions on excavations of peat bog bodies. First, the oldest fingerprints on record are over 2,300 years old and were taken from the bog body known as Tolland Man in 1976, discovered in which European country? Denmark. D Denmark. Denmark is correct. Dated to the early Bronze Age, the earliest bog body with skin intact was found in Central Ireland in 2011 and goes by what name? Uh, pass. Uh, pass. pass. Cashel Man. Finally, Lindau Man, nicknamed Peat Marsh, is a well-preserved Iron Age bog body discovered in 1984 near Wilmslow in which county of northwest England? Uh, not, uh, Cumbria? Uh, Cumbria. It's Cheshire, just down the road from here. Let's start the question now. I want a noun here. Ultimately from a Latin word meaning glass, what noun originally referred to sulphates of metals, typically iron... Trinity Banerjee! Vitriol. Vitriol is correct. Your bonus is then, Trinity, three questions on cartoon catchphrases. Derived from an Algonquin language, the name of which dish made up of sweet corn and lima beans appears in an exclamation of annoyance commonly uttered by the Looney Tunes character Sylvester the Cat? Like drafts or something, I don't know. Drafts? You wanna go with drafts? No, yeah. I don't think that. I'm not gonna get this. Uh... Come on. Uh, Say what Sarah said. Drafts? No, it's suffering succotash. Second, mentioned in the first book of Kings, which king of Judah succeeded his father Asa and was a contemporary of King Ahab of Israel? His name features in a favourite oath of Yosemite Sam. Do we, are we gonna get this from the period? Mm -hmm. um, any funny sounding kings from that time, like kind of like Hewitt, maybe. Like no, Balthazar or something. Yeah. Something like something that's Hewitt? gonna sound funny. Balthazar. Come on. Balthazar? No, it was Jehoshaphat, as in jump in Jehoshaphat. Finally, represented by a symbol known as a lemniscate, what mathematical concept features in the catchphrase yeah. of Buzz Lightyear in the Toy yeah, Story yeah. films? <laughs> Infinity. Infinity is correct. Another start of question. In music, what two-word term referring to a number describes a compositional structure represented as ABA? -A. It is sometimes <laughs> Trinity Anderson. Ternary form. Ternary form is correct. Your bonus is Trinity are on Italians with shared initials. In each case, give the full name and surname of both individuals. Signing First, a Venetian architect who was influenced by Vitruvius and who wrote the four books of architecture, and a footballer who was man of the match in the 2006 FIFA World Cup final. It's Palladio, the architect, I think. And uh, was it Buffon? Because we, we, we need the initials, right? So, Andrea, what's the initials Palladio of Palladio? Palladio Andrea Pilo. Yeah, but. Um... <laughs> And at the goal, Trinity College, Cambridge, have 190, but Open University have 170. Guys, you were ahead for so long and by such vast margins, such, such bad luck that you just got on a slightly bad run at the end. Yep. Yeah. And a few key starter questions let you down. But this is not the end for you. You get to come back, you get to have another go, and uh, you're such a strong team that I think this is certainly not necessarily goodbye. So well done and well played. Trinity, do you like to make it stressful? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Do you like to make it stressful? I think, it's sort of, I think we should assume that you're going to start on minus points and end up ahead yeah. somehow. But um, you did really well at the end. And by the way, that was Andrea Palladio yeah. and Andre Pirlo, so that would have been a nice yep. uh, extra yeah. five points. Well done. Um, we shall see you again. I hope you can join us next time for another quarterfinal match. But until then, it's goodbye from Open University. Goodbye. goodbye. It's goodbye from Trinity College, Cambridge. Goodbye. Bye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye.